sup. I didn't think that I would ever be making this video because personally, I think Q and A's are stupid. I don't actually think they're stupid, but I just didn't think anyone actually watched them. I just never click on them. But I asked y'all on my Instagram if you wanted me to do one and the response was overwhelmingly yes. I guess you guys are just more interested in me than I thought. But basically, I just wanna keep it super casual. I'm sitting on my floor. And if this is your first time on my channel, welcome and what a great video to start on. All right, let's get started. I asked y'all to ask me questions on my Instagram and there's a few that are easy to answer and then there's a few that like require an explanation. So we'll just see how it goes. Starting off easy, how tall am I? I am 5'9". Another easy one. How many relationships have I been in? Zero. All right, and then one of the most asked questions was like, how did I get started in the influencer world? Or how did I like get to where I am? And honestly, I can't give you a concrete answer, but I will explain to the best of my ability. Basically like two years ago, I started posting on TikTok as a joke because one of my friends was on TikTok whenever it like bought out Musical.ly or whatever. Basically she introduced me to the app and honestly, I just thought it was funny. And so I started making videos and I would just post them as private, like just for my friends to see. Basically, I just got too lazy to private all the videos so I just like let them stay public not thinking anything because at the time the algorithm wasn't really talked about and what I mean by that is anyone can post something and like blow up one day one of my videos blew up and if you really want to see what kind of videos I made you can scroll all the way down on my TikTok and it's really embarrassing basically it was just me lip syncing to like funny audios like Cody Ko videos and like making my own skits out of it there was no comedic value like coming from me like it was just me like it was so dumb anyway so the video started blowing up this was in the very very early stages of TikTok so there wasn't nearly as much competition as there is now. Like literally everyone is on TikTok. Everyone's trying to blow up. Um, whenever I was doing this, my friends were literally making fun of me to my face. And I was, I was like, it's stupid. Like it's actually dumb. And so we just all laughed about it. But I think it was when I hit like 10K. 10k, 10,000 followers. And I said to myself, I was like, I'm gonna make a career out of this. And so I guess you could say I unintentionally manifested it. When I hit 10,000 followers, I was dead set on making this my life. I didn't know how, but I just knew that like, this was what I was gonna do. This is what I was meant to do. So I just took it and ran with it. Um, I kept making that same content for like about a year. And that's when the rest of the world kind of jumped on the train of TikTok and it became more relevant, I guess. And that's when I kind of fell into like a creative rut because the content that I was posting originally like wasn't doing as well, which happened for a good reason. Because one, my videos weren't personable and so people weren't following me to like see more of me. They were following me because like I had a viral video. I didn't have like a loyal following. I had no area of focus. I guess you could call it a niche. I hate that word. I was just like posting content all over the place. And so then there was like a six month period where I was stuck at 930K. And I know there's some people that are gonna remember this because it, it was a solid six months of going, losing followers, gaining followers, but staying in the range of 930k and so that's when i was like honestly i have nothing to lose at this point like i might as well just start posting whatever the fuck i want and so that's when i started posting like more authentic videos of myself that's when i started getting into like fashion content and obviously fashion is what i'm known for now but it's crazy to think that it that is not even close to how it started. But I always knew that I wanted to be in the fashion world, um, like ever since I was literally six years old and watched my first episode of Project Runway, I knew that fashion was my passion, oh my God. But I mean, it's been amazing. Anyways, wow, I really got sidetracked. Next question, I guess kind of goes to the last one, what inspired you to get into fashion? Like I said before, I've always loved fashion, but I was never confident enough in myself to actually pursue it, I guess. But I mean, when I was in elementary school, I wanted to be a fashion designer. I wanted to go on Project Runway. And then I wanted to be a textile designer. I wanted to be a graphic designer. I've always been a really creative person. I've been in art classes my entire life. I love to draw and I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> and when I was a junior in high school, my original plan was to go to FITM for um, graphic design and fashion merchandising. And I guess that leads me into my next question, which is, do I go to college? And that answer is no. Basically, I was planning on going to school. I was going to go to school to FITM in Los Angeles. I toured the school, fell in love with it, and that was what I was planning to do after high school. But then, the original reason why I didn't go to college directly after high school was because of competitive cheerleading. I decided that 
I wanted to super senior and cheer another year on a senior team. So it was supposed to be just a gap year, but during that year is when like the TikTok thing happened and I was like, I'm gonna do this. And my mom did not get it. She was like, this is insane. And so she made me get an internship with a real estate agency. And I'm honestly glad she did. Um, it was really fun. And I got to learn a lot about just like business and stuff like that. And as much as I wanna say like, I don't need a fallback plan. It is nice to have that like just in case, um, but I don't plan on resorting to that. And no, I do not plan on going back to college ever. Anyways, next. Okay, this is a good one. Is LA going to be your final living destination or would you like to live somewhere else? My LA is definitely not my final living destination. I love it here, it's amazing. I love my roommate. This is the first time I visited New York when I was, I think 15, maybe 16. I knew that that was where I wanted to end up eventually. I would love to be by coastal, which is obviously like a major goal, but New York City is definitely one of my biggest goals and dreams. And I get tons of DMs for people asking me if I live in New York or people telling me that I need to move to New York. And all my closest friends and my mom say the same thing. I'm gonna end up in New York. So yeah, that's the goal, but right now I'm happy in Los Angeles. Um, the weather is amazing. Um, I grew up in Texas, so it was like, 30 degrees one day and then like 100 the next and that's not even an exaggeration. Okay, next question. Were you ever insecure? Um, yes, I still have insecurities. Like, I mean, I get insecure all the time. I guess the only difference now is I don't allow them to dictate my life and I don't allow them to control my happiness because it's important to acknowledge flaws or things that you're insecure about, but it's not okay to like dwell on them. Something that I was really insecure about for many, many years is my broad shoulders I'm from cheerleading because I was a back spot. And so I had like man shoulders. I still kind of do, but I was so insecure about them. And so I was like, Hannah, there are so many bigger problems than your broad shoulders. How do you get over caring about what others think? I could honestly do an entire video about this and just like self-confidence in general. And maybe I will do that because I've been told many times that I am lucky to be able to acknowledge the things that I do when it comes to self-confidence. I think I recognized it so early that I don't even really remember what it feels like to give a shit about what other people think. I'm very grateful that I was able to recognize that as early as I did because it's so frustrating to me whenever I see people that you know, should have like all the self-confidence in the world and they just can't get over the fact that other people have opinions about them. I know how hard it is and I know how happy they could be because it's not something that happens overnight. Like there's nothing that I could tell you right now that would just like immediately make you stop giving a shit about other people. It's something that you have to consistently work at and it's something that you build and grow upon. It takes time and it takes a lot of working on yourself. I would say that my biggest piece of advice would be fake it till you make it. And that goes for all areas of life. That's like my motto because you can convince your brain that something is real. So if you're constantly telling yourself over and over and over again, I'm gonna wear what I want today because I don't care what people think of me. Even if you don't believe that, as long as you're telling yourself that, you're eventually going to start to believe it. Another random example would be if you have no idea what you're doing at work, you smile and you act like you know exactly what the fuck you're talking about and people are gonna believe you. Confidence will get you into so many doors. As long as you're projecting confidence, people are going to believe you, people are gonna buy whatever you're saying. Confidence is literally the easiest gateway into anything that you want. And so even if you don't fully believe that what you're saying is true, you just have to keep telling your brain that and then eventually it will be true. Wow, I really hope that that just made sense because I don't even remember what the question was. Oh my God. I guess I do need to make an entire video about um, confidence. Okay, next question. What do you do when you wanna shoot content but you can't get yourself to I have ADHD? This is a very good question. One that I don't fully have the answer to. This applies to me in every area of my life, not just shooting content. I mean, that is like the least of my worries. Like sometimes I physically cannot get out of bed because I can't decide whether I want to get water first or brush my teeth first because my brain is like on fire because I can't decide because ADHD. It is really hard, but I've found that when you wanna do something, just get up and start doing it. And that goes for long-term and short-term goals. If you have a long-term goal and you know you want you want this long-term goal but you don't know how to start, you just do. You start because if you don't start somewhere, 
you're never going to get to where you want to be. So you just, you can't wait for the perfect moment, the perfect inspiration. It's a lot like how people describe going to the gym for the first time. Like you can't wait for like that burst of energy to like get yourself to go. You just have to do it. And this is something that I struggle with a lot on a daily basis. But the best advice that I can give you is to mentally power through. <laughs> okay, next question. Uh, trigger warning, I'm gonna be talking about eating. Have you ever struggled with body image? Yes heavily. I grew up a competitive cheerleader surrounded by tiny, skinny, tan, six-pack having girls. I grew up naturally very, very thin. My clothes never fit. They were always like a little baggy in certain areas because I was a literal stick, but I didn't really start paying attention to my body versus other girls' bodies until like my senior year of high school. That's when I started paying attention to my weight, um, what I ate. It wasn't that bad. It was more of just like um, curiosity reasons. And then TikTok is where I had most of my issues. Subconsciously, I had grown up knowing what like the perfect cheerleader looked like. And even though I didn't necessarily care, it was still engraved in my brain. And cheerleaders were the only humans on the planet to me for like my entire life. So when I got on TikTok and saw people start talking about comparing themselves to other people, wanting to be skinnier, it was something that I had never put a lot of thought into until I did. And it was really not good. I'm not gonna self-diagnose because I never went to a doctor because I didn't know that anything was wrong. Um, my mom didn't know anything was wrong. I honestly still don't think that she knows anything was ever wrong, but I honestly didn't know that that was something that you needed help for or that you could have help for. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it was basically just heavily restricting um, excessive workouts and a lot of water. So yes, I have had my fair share of body image issues. I'm not perfect. I still get insecure about my body sometimes but it is not nearly as bad as it was. But in today's society, it's, it's scary how romanticized and normalized it is to have an eating disorder. And I just got really deep. I am so sorry. <laughs> um, anyways, favorite quote. Let's see, probably by my favorite competitive cheer coach. He would always say, you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable because nothing good ever came out of someone's comfort zone, so. All right, where do you see yourself in five years? This is a hard one because I try to avoid long-term planning because it really stresses me out and I hate not being able to be in control of things. I don't know, I guess like a major goal of mine is to start a brand that is fully and 100% mine, but I don't know, maybe that'll change in five years, so I, honestly have no idea. Okay, and then lastly, what is my cannot live without item? I would have to say, besides like the obvious, probably that damn Brandy Melville hoodie. I love that thing more than anything I own, honestly. Anyways, I know we went on a couple bunny trails throughout this video, but hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully your question was answered. Um, a lot of the questions were like similar in context, so I tried to narrow it down. I hadn't done a QA and a on here yet and I wanted to answer some of my most asked questions just so that I can refer people to this video whenever they ask. I hope you guys enjoyed. And like I said earlier, I seriously am so incredibly grateful for all of you who, who follow me, who watch me, who care about what I have to say. I think it's insane. This is only the beginning and it can only go up from here. So I love you guys and I will see you in the next one.